Hey guys, welcome to episode number 21 of the Derby Crow Life. And to start off this episode, we are about to finish off the season in the Championship. We are currently seven points clear of Nottingham Forest, who are in third. So if we can uh, just make sure we get the uh, final few wins, then we can confirm um, promotion automatically. So that's absolutely fantastic. Obviously, four games remaining. As I said in the previous episode, what I'll probably do, I'll play this Brentford game. If the, if the gap goes to, like, so many points, um, I'll simulate against Cardiff. May even win the simulated game. It's, it's not necessarily gonna. We, we may just speed up the process. Basically, definitely play against Leeds United, and um, yeah, we'll probably simulate the game against Birmingham. So let's just head over to the transfer hub. But because I've been looking at some players that could potentially be done on pre-contract signings. Now we haven't got the most amount of money. We've only got eighty thousand in transfer budget and thirty-one thousand in uh, wage. What I've done is I've skimmed down the. Uh, Youth Academy to players that even this guy here I'm not too fussed whether we keep him if you look at the wages as well like they're on about a thousand wages um, what, what I like about these two is the 60 rated basically so I'm gonna I'm gonna release this youth player just gives us a little bit more money for um, us to be able to make some pre-contract signings because I'm not going to use the youth players anyway um, it's not that much of an issue to me so Let's just head into here. We have added a few players here. We've got Wooly from uh, Espanyol. 28 million pound release clause. Can play out wide or down the middle at strike position. Um, and he would do very well. And I think he's around 30,000 wages. So we can afford him. We also have Alexander Nubel here from Schalke. 23 years old. The only thing about him is because we've got um, Van der Voort, Whether I want to sign another goalkeeper and kind of put Van der Voort as the backup keeper, that's that's the uh, debate I've got to go over, so I'm not too fussed if we get him or not, obviously it, it, I'd, I'd rather get an outfield player first. We also have Kovalenko here, who we do actually have a scout report for, uh, four star week foot, and then around 20,000 um, wages, so yeah, I think we're going to kick it off with Oscar, since he is at the top, he's currently on 27,000 wages in uh, China which which is incredibly wrong because he should he should be on like nearly half a million wages um, it'd be really cool because that's what that's what they do on football manager they give these players their accurate wages and Oscar's clearly not on 27k so I'm gonna do it anyway because you know just the game I may as well play the game and he's the best option literally so he would slot into that camp position very nicely indeed so let's head into negotiations so we're gonna go for crucial since that's where you'll more than likely. The thing is, if I gave him like an important, maybe his uh, contract wouldn't be as high. Obviously, we're gonna. The thing is, you can only offer a year more than what they offer you. So if I went for three years, they would have just declined it. There. It'd be interesting to see if they come in. No, they haven't. So what I'm gonna do um, is do something. Oh, I've actually got quite a bit more than I thought. Oh. Where's all this money come from? I'm a bit confused, I'm not going to lie. Um, we've, we've got more money than I thought we had. So I'll, I'll go for 40,000 plus 150,000 sign non-bonus. And if he signs that, then absolutely fantastic. And there we go. Boom. I'm, I'm honestly I'm a bit amazed because I don't know where that money's come from. That's the thing that's caught me off there. So we've got Oscar on it. I'm, I'm a bit amazed because I didn't... I thought we'd have to... I, I'm really confused. So let me just show you our office. So this bit said 32,000 and 80,000 in um, transfer budget. Which is something... Maybe. Maybe we just had enough then. I don't know. I'm a bit, I'm a bit confused. I'm a bit amazed that we could afford that. So we can actually afford another player which is actually quite decent so let's let's go back to the transfer hub the question is what position do we go for do we go for Kovalenko um, we don't really need now I'd, I'd say we don't need Kovalenko now that we've got Oscar who is absolutely an, an incredible signing um, I do like this Timothy Kastanak as well Kastanye or whatever his name is um, I think he's a cracking signing because he can play either wing and at right back obviously for uh, Jaden Bogle if you look at his stats 85 uh, stamina which is brilliant uh, for a winger 
and then like 72 73 tackling so that's that's just really really good um jeff hendrick of course will go into those uh, cdm positions more like more than likely um i'd be interested to see how much we actually paid is we're giving him like that's that's the crazy thing like oscar's on 40k wages and jeff hendrick's on 36k wages I'm just this, this game is very funny but nevertheless let's go into another player obviously tommy yasso I'm probably going to look to get uh, once the uh, summer transfer window does start. So it's not—it's nice to finish off the season with some pre-contracts, of course. I think there was this Percy Tau here, but I feel at 76 rate, he, he does look very nice. Um, but I just I just feel with Oscar and uh, the other player, I also like this Wu League guy. Um, or do we go for Nubel as a backup goalkeeper? I think just because of the amount of money we've got remaining, there was a player I just saw here, I think. There is also Jordan Ibe as an option at 25,000 to 30,000 wages. It's, it's just a bit crazy that, you know, you're paying like 73, 75 rated players the same amount of money as um, an 83 rated player. So let's let's go into Wooly. We don't really know too much um, in terms of price. He is around 75, maybe 77 rated. He's, he's rapid. He's got about 90 pace. Um, I think he only signed... From the Chinese Super League about last January, not if that makes any sense. Like in real life, this the January just gone. So we'll go for important again. Why is my wage at fifty thousand budget and zero when that is not what I've got? I'm a bit confused. If I can li literally just sign all the pre-contracts in the world, it's almost like they, they they ignore what amount of money I've got and just go here's fifty k. It's a bit strange, I'm not going to lie. We'll give him a three or four. Give him a four-year contract, why not? Still be 32, that'll be decent. He only wants a two. Let's push it up to a three. Into the wage then. I think if Oscar's 40k, we'll go 30k for him. Um, 110k signed non-bonus. I'm just a bit confused at the wage budget. I'm honestly, I don't know. I'm almost tempted to go for Nubal as well and see if we, we get the money as well. Um, they, they have offered a little bit more. They want a 10 goal bonus. Quite a big sign non bonus, actually. Um, but we can still afford him if we do submit that offer. Hopefully, it's gone up to 32k. Um, can I just knock down this by a few thousand? Um, and that way, just saving a little bit of, the, bit of the hypothetical money. There we go. We have signed Wu Li. Um, I'm a bit confused. I'm honestly a bit confused because I was like. Surely we can only afford one because this is the amount of money. I don't know if there's a thing in the game. Um, I'm confused. I'm honestly a bit confused just because financially it doesn't make sense to me. I don't know how we're managing to get this like 50... Th it's like an imagine. Oh, so does does the game just... I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. So we've only got 700 quid now on wage budget. Let me just go into one more. <laughs> just, just keep signing pre-contracts all day long. Um, let me just add Harvey Barnes to the scout report. So he's a player that I am very tempted to look at in the next transfer window. Really, really nice player. So I could go for Kovalenko, who's only on 20k. Or do I go for Nubel as a goalkeeper backup? Um, I think since we've already got a few cams and wingers, I'll, I'll go for a goalkeeper because I can always... You know, sell other goalkeepers, and it'll be just interesting to see how much uh, wage budget we do have. See, so yeah, again, it's the 50. I'm a bit confused. I'm honestly, I don't know if I've done a glitch or something. Um, but we just keep getting unlimited amount of money, and I don't know if I should do it. The thing is, if I'm getting so when you get promoted, you get about 15 to 20 million, which isn't realistic because in real life you get about 100. 30 40 million um so you know like i like the idea of making it more realistic in terms of we bring in those of these signings it's, it's almost like a loophole this is um to bring in a number of players so i don't know we can always loan out these players if if it feels like a bit of a cheat which it kind of is but at the same time i just i just feel like giving us what the 20 million that we get at the start of the season just isn't realistic compared to obviously it's difficult because if they just gave newly promoted teams like 100 million you just go and sign Mbappe or something um which isn't realistic of course so 
into the uh, contract stage for new, but I'm not a hundred percent sure what to really offer him. So we'll go for the the basic twenty thousand plus hundred k, and he has accepted that. So again, like I could honestly just sit here for the next hour and just keep signing pre-contract players. Um, and five isn't that many, really. When you think about a newly promoted team, they they normally make a few signings indeed. So we we have got a cam, we've got. Castagne, who can play a number of positions. Jeff Hendrick can play in the middle. Wooley can play up front. Um, so we could do with a defender. I just I don't know if this is... I don't know. I do like the idea of bringing in a number of players for next season. Because um, that will be quite a fun balancing act. Just to see if I can keep everyone happy at the club. Um, but may, maybe I should stop. Maybe I should stop the addiction. Because I could just literally just sit here. And keep signing players and players and players for next season. Um, let me just see if there's a centre back here with 12 months left or 3 months left now. See, so yeah, I think we're going to go into the first game against Brentford. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the signings we have made to kick off this episode. I'm, I'm quite amazed. It does technically tell us that we have 0 left now. Um, so I'm not 100% I'm not sure. As you can see, all these players signing here. Um... Yeah, I'm not. I'm not too sure how it's really working, but nevertheless, let's let's just uh, go into the next game then against uh, Brentford. So as you can see, here, the finances are zero and zero now. So I think I should probably stop now, just in case if I, I don't know, overspend or something, um, and then next season we have an issue with wage budget or something. Um, so I think I think we've made more than enough signs. The five that we have done on pre-contracts. I think that's about right. Obviously, we'll make another four or five permanent signings um, and also probably sell a few of our players to balance out the squad. So let's go into the home game against Brentford. Um, this episode is more, it, I don't know, it, we need to get the wins to make sure we keep in top two positions. But at the same time, um, it's mainly about um, just wrapping up the season, really. We are then at Pride Park against Brentford. Obviously, a team we won't be playing next season, so it is the final time we will be playing against them. We have had to make a few changes due to fitness. Uh, Bielik and Davies in the defence with Wisdom. Then we've got Huddleston in the whole midfield role. It'll be interesting to see what we do with Huddleston. Um, I may look to sell him just because of the stamina. Like It's not really viable to be playing him every three or four games. Uh, when he's fit, obviously Van Bergen and Josasun out wide against his former club Josasun. They've gone for the. It could be a five or it could be a four-three-three. Three. I think it's a fourth. I don't know. I think it's a five actually. It's just weird that middle centre back or CDM. It's just so out of position. Um, so yeah, they've gone for Rasmussen and uh, Henry at the fullback positions. Then Gunnarsson and goal. Jean Vier and Sorensen and Pinnock in the defence. Then Hamer and Moko Moko Moko. I don't know, that guy in the midfield. I, when the commentator says it, I can say it, but when I've not heard it in about six months, I couldn't really say it. Then Benarama and uh, Buemo at uh, the uh, right mid position, then Malkandes up top. On to Shinny here, can he unleash Josasun against his former club? Has got the pace to run into the box, can he find the back of the net? Oh, with the shot, Josasun does get us the early start to make it 1-0 against Brentford. I think another thing is, uh, in the championship, it's kind of difficult to know um, where we should be in the table because, you know, um, obviously I should be in the top six anyway, so difficulty-wise, I've got it right for this season, but when we get promoted to the Premier League, I'm going to make it so difficult that we're going to be pushing for relegation, basically. I don't want us to be um, anywhere near mid-table, basically. Here's Van Bergen out wide with the pace. He's got Josasun at the back post if we can pull it across the face of goal. Yes, we can. Josasun, with his second goal against his former club, does make it 2-0. It'll be interesting to see how much game time he gets next season as well. Um, since he's not going to go... Like, Van Bergen at least is 20 years old, so he's going to go up in ratings and stats. Josasun's going to stay pretty much the same. He's about 28 now, so... Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Obviously, 12, 12 goals in about... 14 assists this season for him. Um, it is like I think dynamic potentials could be a lot better. I think if a player's score, if he's contributing like 10, 20 goals, th that should be easy at least a three ratings plus because they're clearly doing better than they should be. Chance here to get Wes uh, Weggorn through. Takes it into his stride nicely. 
would be nice to get Jos as soon as hat trick, but I'm going to take it with Waghorn anyway, and it is into the back of the net to make it 3 0. I feel like this game feels like professional difficulty. It doesn't feel ultimate difficulty. Um, but as I said, the, f the first goal is about 90% of the job in ultimate difficulty. If you can get the first goal, then great. If you concede the first goal, it's a completely different game. Brentford on the attack with Marcondes slips out to Hammer with the shot saved by Van der Voort. That's another factor as well because he's not got the best of stats, but in terms of championship stats, he's a very good goalkeeper because of the uh, training he's been in. He's gone up like 10 in rating so far this season. Um, so for the computer to score, it does have to be a decent shot. Chance here for Brentford in the box, and it has gone into the back of the net. Keep a kind of out of position after uh, parrying that. I could do it, as I was saying, his, uh, his saving stats are very good, but that there, like his handling, if I increase that, then he'll either punch that or catch that. And it is the one Brentford player that I can't say his name. Ball out wide, wide here with Henry. Do need to remember that the game's not over yet. Obviously, a lot of games um, have been lost from like two goal advantages, so. Would be nice to get a third again just to give us a bit of cushion. Josephson's in the box here. Can he get himself the hat trick? Hits the post and it goes out. There we go, full time against Brentford. We have won the game 3 1, got all three points, and hopefully um, kept that gap between us and Forrest. It'll be interested to see if Forrest have lost the game or not. We almost got Josephson's hat trick, um, but I'm just going to advance the press conferences at this point. So, as you can see there, Nottingham Forest have drawn to Preston 1 or So, that should mean the gap has gone to. Potentially nine points, I think. What's it at the minute? So we've got three. Yeah, nine points clear of Nottingham Forest. So we will be simulating the next game against Cardiff City. Um, it will be the first simulated game of the career mode since we've pretty much guaranteed uh, promotion. Now, I don't think we can catch Stoke City. Let me just quickly. Yeah, with Stoke City are gone at this point, um, unless we win all of our games and Stoke City drop points, which is unlikely you know I, I don't see Stoke dropping that many points I'm, I'm not too fast either about winning the championship to that kind of point so yeah I'm more than happy with the uh, promotion which we've pretty much guaranteed there so we have got the youth scout report here um, I think I just released this guy and he's just scouted them again this guy should be... I don't know. Maybe they've got the same name. They do They do have a lot of players with exactly the same name. But I'm about 90% sure I've released this guy. But um, you can't allow your... Oh, because we don't have any money. We can't sign anyone. Cool. We'll just let him stay out there then. Cool. <laughs> just checking that the team's all fit for the uh, Cardiff game. I'm just going to check as well. Yeah, we've got a week until the Leeds United game. So more than enough time. Um, and then there's quite... Yeah. And then another week until... The Birmingham game. So yeah, fitness-wise, they should be all good for this game. So let's go into simulating this match. Cardiff City aren't exactly the most fun team to play against as well. They're quite bullyish and um, we'll take a chunk out of you. And there we go, we have won the game 1-0. Obviously, Chris Martin didn't come off the bench. I should have probably put him in the team, but since we're not playing the game anyway and uh, we've pretty much got promotion. That's another thing, like playing throughout this entire season. Um, oh, Stoke have dropped points. Could we do it? So we, we need to win both the games and Stoke need to drop points. Um, I, st I still don't see it as likely that we're going to get to win the title. Uh, Schurz is also almost a 75 rate player. That's that's where the kind of benchmark is for a Premier League player. If, if they're below 75, it's going to be very difficult for me to put them in the first team 11. We did actually transfer less George Evans since um, he's definitely one of the players I'm going to look to move on anyway. So let's go... Let's go accept that because that is his value is 1.2 million. They've offered 1.2 million. I don't see any reason to try and squeeze out any more money. Next game is against Leeds United, which we will be playing it potentially as the last game of the career mode. The reason I want to play it is a it might be the last time we played Leeds United on this career mode, and b if we win and West Brom win, they go into the playoffs, and that means we do. This is the last time we play Leeds United, so. A little bit of a you know spike game. Um, we've we've got promotion at this point. Forest have definitely dropped the ball now, and um, yeah, it's kind of just to just to see if West Brom can 
win the game and uh, take Leeds United uh, playoff spot. So let's let's go into the game. It will be a last opportunity to uh, play with a few of these players that I may I may not use next season. And obviously, it is a big rivalry, so I want to be playing the game. Um, I think I will put Huddleston in since he is one of those players that may he may not feature too much next season. Um, which is a bit of a shame because I just, I just, he is cracking. It's just the 30s two stamina just doesn't help him at all. Uh, in any case at all. I'm also going to put Max Low in just to see if we can get a bit more growth. It's going to be playing mainly a young team for this one. Here we are then against Leeds United against Derby County. It is our final game of the career mode. So it is a great way to finish it off. It's a bit of a shame that fixture wise they didn't put this as the last game. Um... But then again, we could potentially be playing Leeds in the playoffs. Um, maybe that's the thought process. But nevertheless, they have gone for the 4-1-4-1. Uh, we did lose last time out against Leeds United. They did have Patrick Bamford, but today they do have Nketiah. Um, they also have Kiko Kassi in goal. Luke Ailing and Elioski at fullback. Ben White and uh, Berardi. Then Calvin Phillips in the holder midfield role. Costa and Harrison out wide. Vernon Nita, which is a bit odd because I don't think he's playing for Leeds. Uh, and Tyler Roberts in the central midfielder role. So, yeah, we've we've gone for Max Lowe and uh, Bogle at fullback. Obviously, Holmes has done well in that cam position. Another thing I could have thought of is if we got a few goals for Bowen towards the end of this season, um, we could have just about nicked it off Rooney for the top spot. Well, that over Max Lowe inside to Van Bergen. Can he go around the defender? Yes, he does. Into Jack Marriott, and it is straight through Kika Kassia to make it one 0 Are we are we on ultimate difficulty? You know. <laughs> There's not much, like, even when I was playing on Legendary, um, for the first, like, ten, ten episodes of this series, there's not been a drastic increase in difficulty since then, really. They, they do get back into games a little bit more on Ultimate Difficulty, but that is the number 14th, 14th goal of the season. Um, and yeah, maybe Leeds aren't going up. Chance here to get Bowen through. If he can get a goal, he will go on to... Number 20, I think, of the season. He has got into a decent area. It's gone across to Jack Marriott. It was a bit of a bad shot from Bowen, to be honest. Um, but it's turned into a nice assist. And that is the second of the game for Jack Marriott, if we can get a nice hat-trick for him. In terms of assist-wise, Jack Marriott's been fantastic season this season. And even 15 goals is very good. Um, when you think about the amount of rotation um, our strikers have had this year with Waghorn and uh, Martin also scoring like 15 goals. So Pablo Hernandez is retired and he's only 33. I've seen a lot of players um, retire in this, like basically anyone over 33. I think Zlatan's uh, retired too. They are playing very attacking leads, I must say. And we are catching them on the counter-attack. Can we get Marriott's hat-trick? Now into him, into the back of the net, and there we go. There's game over in 17 minutes against Leeds United. A very, very, very easy three goals, honestly. Like, this, this game... I don't know if because we've been promoted, like the morale of the team is super, super high, but they just, I don't know, just terrible leads. That's a good touch there from Dwayne Owens, but can he get himself into the box? We could get Marriott as fourth here. Maybe Van Bergen, actually, he can get a goal. There we go. It's just like lining up for goals, and uh, that is 4 0 at half time against Leeds. Another thing is goal difference, obviously. Um, for us, we're done, but for Leeds United, if we can absolutely. Um, destroy their goal difference then maybe West Brom who may be on the same amount of points at Leeds at the end of the season will have the better goal difference there we go full time against Leeds United we have won 4-0 we did so off Jack Mark for uh, Chris Martin of course three goals after three attempts uh, very easy indeed I just I don't know what to make like against the top 16 realistically this game should be a lot tougher um, but it's something we'll have to address next season in the Premier League um, again, I'm just going to skip the press conferences now because they are boring the life out of me. So that was actually the early kickoff. So it'll be interesting to see if West Brom can get a victory against Huddersfield and go into the top six. Into a bit of training, then we have got Schurz to a 75 rated player, which is good for the Premier League. We've also got Max Lowe pretty close to a 73. Um, same with Van der Voort up to a, nearly a 74. So message here from Tom Huddleston. As I said, probably... Um, We'll have to look to move him on next season in the Premier League because just in terms of playing, he only plays one in a few games. 
there we go George Evans has been sold for 1.2 million um he was like, like he was back up basically we used him every so often when we weren't too uh, good on fitness but there's there's a nice 800,000 added to the budget we can actually look at uh, the uh, oh 79 oh we've got a lovely little player on our hands then I thought it was only like 75 rated so 79 um, is very good indeed 90 acceleration 86 sprint speed 88 drumping as well which is very good um, finishing at 79 very good ball control 81 I think he's got three star skills four star weak foot so yeah, we've got a really nice player there at 13 million value. Um, very happy with that signing, of course. Harvey Barnes, scout report here, 75 rated. See, this is the kind of thing that we could sign um, when we do go to the Premier League. I see him more as a cam than a left winger, though. So into the final game of the career mode. We are currently 12 points clear of Nottingham Forest. I'm amazed at how many points we have got um, since only beating them at like, the start of... April um, and we we were technically were we just a, I think we were a point ahead of them at that point and obviously after these four games which we have won all of them um, it's made a massive difference of course so let's let's go into the last game of the season I'm just going to quickly check fitness looks all good to me um, oh we've had a bit of growth to Jaden Bogle to a 75 good to see he is uh, growing of course very good player indeed in this uh, career mode. We've also had a bit of a downgrade to Curtis Davis to 72. Um, Johnny Mitchell not happy at all. Max Lowe up to a 73, so that's happened, so that's good to see. Um, also, Matt Clark going to a 73. Let me know in the comment section down below, shall we sign Matt Clark on a permanent or not? Um, I think these two have made a good combination from January. We've definitely not conceded as many goals um, since we did sign per shares, if you look at the calendar before we do go into the game, I'm trying to think of a game where we conceded a lot of goals. Um, and there's not many, you know, we've, we've conceded one or two goals in games. They're not drastic. Obviously, some of these games, um, I think, yeah, we lost that game against Stoke 3 2. Maybe Curtis Davis was in that game. Uh, we won that, lost that game against Huddersfield as well. But there's not been that many conceded since uh, the two came in so into the final game of the first season of this career mode a bit of a shame we're simulating it but I just I just feel we've we've played plenty of games um, and we have lost the last game of the season Pershers has got a sending off there so he may be suspended for the first game in the Premier League um, <laughs> which which maybe isn't the wisest things to do but nevertheless we uh, have finished off the season which is great to see 92 points after 46 games. Um, unfortunately, West Brom couldn't just get that point. They couldn't just get that extra point. Because on goal difference wise, ah, oh, that's so annoying. But maybe maybe Fulham, Forest or Cardiff. Um, I think out of those teams in the playoffs, I think Fulham or Cardiff with the two teams. Like, I, I don't want Forest or Leeds to go up, basically. So it is us and um, Stoke City at the minute getting promoted to the Premier League. Let me just see. We scored 115 goals and conceded 62. It's it, you know we've we scored a lot of goals. Um, it also does mean that Wayne Rooney does get the top goal scorer in the league. Um, good to see uh, Collins there from Luton Town scoring 18 goals as well. Uh, Bowen getting 20, of course. A few of those at Hull City. Chris Martin as well. 33 games, 16 goals. Mary on 16 goals. Waggon on 16, uh, 15 goals. On a lot fewer games than. Um, Jack Marriott, that's that's the amazing thing about Waghorn. Um, Jaws soon as well on 12 goals. So yeah, I'm, I'm very happy. Um, as you can see, Marriott on 22 assists is quite incredible. Shinny with 17 as well. We have definitely dominated the goal scoring end. Um, and as I said, I'm, I'm not too fussed about the amount of goals that we have conceded because I want to make it competitive, basically. So yeah, Persia's will probably miss the first game of the Premier League season. Um... But I think we'll be signing a centre-back or two anyway. So, as you can see, we have got 8.4 million prize money. Which I don't know if that is it for the Premier League. It hasn't actually been added yet. Um, we do have a bit of training to go in before we do end off the season. I will just uh, go into some of the stats as well in terms of who's done what and who, what kind of ratings. So since the season is over, let's do a quick squad overview um, in terms of the stats. Obviously, 
Wayne Rooney at the top with 26 goals after 41 games. Absolutely fantastic player, of course. Um, did decline a bit after about the 25 game mark, the last 15 or 10 games. Um, just wasn't quite the same player he was in those first few, but at 34, obviously, is going to go down in stats. Jared Bowen with 49 games played in the season, 24 goals, 6 assists. Very nice indeed. Jack Marriott, I must say, like 50 more more contributions than Wayne Rooney. That's what you got to say about Jack Marriott. He got 23 goals and 25 um, assists, almost 50. Um, obviously, 48 in 48 games is pretty good. Martin Wagon as well, doing well. Chris Martin doing well. Um, I tell you, Shinny's been player of the season though. Like Shinny was the player that made a difference. Obviously, we got we got to have these players at the front end. Um, but Shinny was the glue in the team and definitely was one of the best players in the team for sure. Um, just the work rate basically, just having that player that can keep um, playing. I'm not too sure. Oh, so that's a yeah, domestic ban. So he will miss the first Premier League game. Um, I have actually extended in between the two episodes. Um, I did extend Rooney's contract by a year, but he may retire anyway. So we'll have to wait and see what comes up over the next few days. We will have a look at who's grown the most as well it should probably be no surprise it is probably van der Voort. um but curtis davis has gone down by two Rooney down by one it's mainly players over 33 as you can see um scott carson will be coming back to the club after his uh, loan to manchester city we will ignore all these players wisdom went up by one even though did very little in terms of game time um so yeah that's that's quite interesting to see would have liked a bit more growth to van der van bergen um, only a plus one since January. Maybe putting him into training will increase that fast, it seems like. Um, Jack Marriott going up by two again. Like 48 contributions in 48 games. If dynamic potentials are working, this guy should be maybe towards the 80 mark. Um, Pusher is doing well, going up by two. Clark going up by two. Buchanan up by two. Down up by three. Bielek up by three. Um, Max Low up by four. Bird. Knight and uh, Bogle up by 5 and 6. Sibley up by 8, which is good, like up to a 63 now. Um, stats are starting to look quite decent. Obviously, ball control looking nice. As you can see, he's gone from 55 ball control to 72. So it does it does show how good training is. Um, but I kind of I kind of want this kind of growth for all my players and not having to like keep rotating them in the training sessions. Uh, and Van der Voort up to a 74 rate of goalkeeper with 81 reflexes and 81 diving. Um, still need to get that position up a little bit, but a lot better than the 54 he did start the season with. So that was the quick little squad overview. Um, now we'll just go through all this wonderful simulation. We'll see if Rooney's retiring um, and we'll see if anything else happens. So Chelsea have won the FA Cup. I'm actually going to see who's actually won uh, the Premier League and see who's coming down from the Premier League. So we can look to sign some players. That's what I generally do. Um, so Arsenal have won the Premier League. Only losing two games throughout the season. Uh, Liverpool down in sixth is quite surprising. But I think generally this this has been quite an accurate one. A lot of um, career modes have had teams like Chelsea and Man City down here. Um, but yeah, it is the three promoted teams have come straight back down. So I'm going to look to sign some players from um, Sheffield United, Villa and uh, Norwich. Obviously, that's, that's what I tend to do on Football Manager. It's not quite the same uh, in terms of mechanics like the... On Football Manager, when a team gets relegated, the best players will want to be transfer listed, and um, that way you can get them for a, quite a decent price. So, Obi Leipzig have also won the Europa League, something which we will be in next season. Um, it will be interesting to see how we do in that competition. We have had a bit of nice growth here to Jack Marriott and uh, Max Lowe. It does seem that we just we just need to put players into training if we are going to want them to grow. It just isn't quite working. The way I thought it would um, by just keeping them in the team, basically. So there we go. We have come to the end of the season. A few messages here: Kieran Dow, loan expiring; Matt Clark's loan expiring; Jamie Patterson and Ben Hamer and Scott Carson coming back to the team. So just looking at the squad, we do have for next season. It was obviously quite a thin one, but you got to consider those uh, youth players, uh, those pre-contract players that are coming in. As you can see, the bit of training that we have done just in the last few weeks um, up until the end of the season we have got Max Lowe up to a 74 um, does just look a lot better obviously Bogle and Lowe are going to be my fullbacks pretty much 
um, they're sorted. I think centre back is one of the main positions we do need to look at. We can always put Bielik in there, who probably will be um, one of the centre backs. But I feel we, I feel we need at least one more centre back. Scott Carlson will probably be my uh, backup goalkeeper. I think he'll be perfectly fine with Van der Voort as the number one. Um, obviously, we'll, we'll look as well because of the pre-contracts we're getting. Um, we'll look to see what what's best in terms of. Um, the first team so yeah that generally this is pretty much about the team um so yeah hopefully you guys did enjoy the first season of the derby crew mode it's been quite a quite an interesting one we've had some things to deal with in terms of career mode not being 100 percent working but generally it's been very fun and uh, we did manage to win the carabao cup and um, which means we do have europa league football and we did come second in the league which means we are in the premier league for next year so yeah let me know any signings down below in the comment section. Uh, leave a like if you did enjoy and see you soon. Bye.